we have a really full agenda today. So uh, we're going to get started. As always, I hate to bust up all the lively conversation. Everybody's pretty alert this morning, which is great. <laughs> so welcome. Uh, we're excited to be with all of you today. And this is the Garland Chambers Candidate Forum. I'm Anita Collins with American National Bank, and I serve as the chairwoman of the Garland Chamber Board of Directors. Our forum is sponsored today by Carr, Riggs, and Ingram CPAs and Advisors. So at this time, I'd like to welcome and spotlight our sponsor who has made this program possible. So please join me in welcoming Emily Ackerman with Carr, Riggs, and Ingram CPA and Advisors. Hey gang, I promise I won't keep y'all long just because it is a Wednesday morning, 7.30. I'm gonna hit share screen right now. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. yes. Beautiful. Yes. Uh oh, it says someone. Can I admit someone? All right, there we go. All righty. So if y'all don't know me, I'm excited to meet you. I'm Emily Ackerman. I lead business development for Car Riggs and Ingram. The reason why we don't have a partner here today is because tomorrow is actually still an important date on the calendar year, which is April 15th. And so with today being April 14th, I'm here championing my brand. So I know the slides are all being emailed out after this whole presentation today, but I wanted to give you all a little brief overview. If you hadn't heard of Car Riggs and Ingram before meeting me, we are the largest CPA firm you probably hadn't heard of because we were formerly known in Dallas as two other CPA firms that Car Riggs and Ingram acquired. One of them being Vogel CPAs and the other one being Auerbach, Albert and Gold. And Vogel CPAs has been in Dallas for over 70 years. So if I, I don't see a lot of the people on screen right now, but there might be some heads nodding like, oh, that sounds familiar because that was much more of a household name until CRI acquired us. Uh, but CRI was founded in 1997 and we're in 10 states. I'll show you the coverage map in a little bit, but we are a top 25 CPA firm in town with full services of every big national firm in town. So again, this is our coverage map. We're all over the Southeast, so I compare it to SEC football, if y'all are big college football fans. So we kind of range up to North Carolina, all the way down to Florida, all the way west to New Mexico. The only major markets we're not in when it comes to the Texas footprint is Fort Worth, but here I am in Dallas representing the North Texas region. Wanted to kind of give y'all a little bit of the elevator pitch about why CRI is beneficial for you guys to know or for business owners you know in town as well as individuals is because when you think of Car Riggs and Ingram being a top 25 firm, we're 22nd in the marketplace, which kind of makes us that Goldilocks fit. We're not too big and we're not too small. I kind of call us we're just right. Because again, we have all the resources of the big four, which is the Deloitte's, PwC, EY, you name it. Most of my firm, in terms of the tax side and audit side, they've all been big four trained. So you have that expertise. But when it comes to when people say that lower mid market or household family owned business, we're, this, we're a big firm, but you can afford us. Um, there's, when you get up the upper echelon when it comes to accounting firms, those hourly rates make me want to throw up. <laughs> and so uh, when you work with a firm like ours, you're never going to outgrow it. I know for a fact that we still operate like a local firm in town as well. If I put you in touch with one of my partners, you're working with him directly and not some lower level intern, like a lot of other firms will say. And we really do have industry expertise that has spanned for over 70 years, seeing as Vogel's been in the market forever. I'll cover those pretty quickly right here. One of those being manufacturing, and that is a big industry focus here in the Garland Metroplex. And I know these slides are being emailed out, but Vogel actually got its start in Dallas uh, when Dallas was a retail manufacturing hub. Um, a couple of our first clients actually for the firm were in the army manufacturing business for the retail of like the army uniforms. And so just from that on, I mean, we literally have had partners that have been working in this category and industry for years. And I would say about in the Dallas office, about 60% of our book of business is in this space, or what I would deem kind of the blue collar trades. That kind of goes on to the next one, which is construction or essential services. Um, anything that has to do with an essential business that is important for your house or a building, whether it's HVAC, 
concrete, electrical, carpentry. Heck, this week I'm talking to a company that it builds fences. If it is nasty and getting your hands dirty or considered an unluxury business, the trades, that's our specialty. And firm wide across the country, and we're known as being one of the experts in that space as well. And to kind of conclude and wrap everything up, and this is where I come in from business development hat. Again, I'm not an audit partner. I'm not a tax partner, but if I can understand this and talk to people like I'm talking to my grandmother or fifth grader, I hope I can make this simple for you guys. Um, I don't know if y'all have heard about ERC credits. Um, they're a big buzz right now because some rules have changed. And I know most people, and I can't see the screen right now, but a lot of people have heard of PPP loans. I know those were big at the beginning of COVID. And some rules that applied to those were pretty strict. And you weren't, if you had PPP funds, you weren't allowed to have access to the ERC credits. Well, as of March 1st, some of those rules have changed. And so I made this handy dandy little flow chart, hoping that if you or anyone you know who's a business owner is questioning if they have the ability to access these, this pretty much simplifies it. Um, there's a lot of gray area as well with a bunch of businesses where they think they apply, but they're not sure. These also don't just apply to people in hospitality, restaurant and dining. Think about any business that has been fully or partially suspended due to government mandated shutdowns like COVID. So it could be a healthcare company, it could be a daycare, a school, you name it. Um, this flowchart, again, is kind of a black or white, yay or nay, but there is still a lot of gray areas. So I invite you guys to at least have a conversation or a consult. And my team has been helping tons of businesses, even just getting access to these funds, helping them along the way and answering any questions that they may have. Again, I lead business development for the firm. So what that means is I'm a business matchmaker and I match you with the appropriate people within my firm. And I find resources like you guys, not just for my team, but for our clients. And so I want to conclude this and just thank you guys for even having me and proud to be here. Go candidates. Emily, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you to Car Riggs and Ingram for sponsoring. We appreciate your support for this community event. Thank you. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all of our community leaders that are joining us today. As I look through the gallery, there's um, quite a few leaders here and we always appreciate your support and uh, your presence is always appreciated. So thank you for being here today. Well, as most of you know, education and advocacy are initiatives that the Garland Chamber is honored to provide. This forum is a public service and we're privileged and proud to play a role in the democratic process. The Garland Chamber is a nonpartisan organization and shall neither endorse candidates for public office nor political parties. The Garland, um, excuse me. So before we begin, I wanna go over a few of the ground rules. The candidates will have, um, that are in contested races will be given five minutes to address attendees Unopposed candidates will be recognized and spotlighted. There will be strict time limits for comments and um, the candidates will have a timer. There will also be an opportunity for questions and answers. So be sure and post your questions throughout as you think of them because at the end we'll have about 10 minutes to go over questions and answers. All right, so let's get started. We're going to begin with our mayoral candidates. We have Scott LeMay, incumbent, and we have Roel Garcia. So today we're gonna to start with Scott LeMay. Well, thank you uh, and uh, good morning to everybody. And thank you to the chamber and the sponsors for the event. Uh, you know, welcome to everybody who's in attendance. Uh, my name is Scott LeMay. Uh, my wife, Tiffany and I purchased our first and hopefully last home uh, here in Garland 20 years ago, uh, last month in that time, uh, we've raised our three daughters in this house. And through all that time, we've been very involved in our neighborhood association here in Camelot. And that led me to being more involved in the city. Uh, you know, and I, I apologize for not submitting a video with my presentation, uh, but if you're really interested in seeing video of me, the city has almost 14 years of me on tape. 
Uh, I served on the 2006 Charter Review Committee. I served on the Plan Commission from 2007 to 2013. I served as the District 7 City Council Representative from 2013 to 2019, and I've served as mayor since 2019. Uh, you know, and during that time, uh, as in all times before, we faced a lot of challenges here in the city, uh, but we've seen just as many changes. Uh, and through all of that, uh, I've not just been present in the city, but actively involved. Uh, one of my many mentors uh, over the years is the Honorable Jackie Fagan, who is a member of this chamber as well. Uh, you know, Jackie taught me a long time ago that serving on the council is not just about meetings. It's about being involved. It's about working to make things better and not just sitting back and waiting for it to happen or for somebody else to take the lead. Uh, you know, and to serve on this council, uh, you must understand the city's priorities, not, not just district priorities, uh, as well as basic city operations. Uh, and to serve as mayor, you must know all of that and be engaged citywide. And without that, it'll be very difficult to balance those priorities and operations while making sure all voices are heard. And so how do you make sure all those voices are heard? Well, you publish your phone number in every available format. Now, I won't say I get calls from citizens or business owners every day, but I get them most days. I get calls on everything from basic city services, interestingly enough, most especially trash pickup, uh, to economic development. And fortunately for those calls, you know, I have the experience to answer the questions uh, and, and get them in touch, uh, either, either answer the questions or get them in touch with somebody that can assist them further. Uh, as far as accomplishments, I don't keep a scorecard. Uh, I and the council deal with actions and we move forward because that's what we do. We move the city forward. Uh, if I were to name a few, uh, obviously the updating of our Garland Development Code while I was on council uh, was a big step forward for us. Uh, taking a lot of regulations that had been amended and adjusted over the years and, and getting them into one cohesive document. And, and most recently, uh, renegotiating our contract with the Texas Municipal Water District. Uh, that is something that uh, we will see some benefits from in the long term. And that was a that was a very that was a very involved process. Um, but, uh, you know, that's not typically what we do. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I've been involved in countless zoning cases, city ordinance creations, amendments, as well as economic de development agreements. Uh, but, you know, speaking of what we don't normally do, and that's COVID-19, um, I called our first meeting on March 12th, uh, 2019, or yeah, 2020, uh, to, uh, to start addressing this. Our council worked very hard uh, to, to deal with all of the, the, the ever-changing things that were going on. I'm very proud of what we did um, right up through the vaccinations we're doing now. So my goals for this next term is to continue to see the full impl implementation of the 2019 bond package. And even though this process is fully supported by the voters, it will need to be continually a priority for the council. These projects will require multiple years of funding and lots of cost and budget reviews along the way. And it's not just about the groundbreakings and the ribbon cuttings. So again, you have to understand the process and the priorities. And I feel I had the experience uh, to see that through while continuing to represent the city at the highest level. And so for that, I ask you for my, for my support in, or for your support in my reelection. And I'll continue to give every this, everything to the city that I can. And you can call me anytime at 214-794-8904. Thank you, Scott. Next yep. candidate is Roel Garcia. Hello, everybody. Good morning for everybody out there. Uh, my name is Roel Garcia. I've uh, been here for over 50, going on 58 years in Garland, pretty much all my life. I'm a South Texan from Corpus Christi, born and raised as a Texan. Uh, why I'm running for our mayor is that I want to do a lot of difference with our city of Garland uh, development, uh, bringing more business, uh, uh, change a little bit of things. Uh, we need to stop spending, borrowing so much money for our city taxpayers. Uh, we need to, to um, focus on our homeless people. And that's the main thing why I'm running is focus on the homeless people. We need to figure out how we're gonna do something with and take care of these people that's homeless, uh, how we're gonna provide this with care and clinic and AIDS and uh, find a home for these people to get out of these predicament that, I, that they're in. Uh, I have talked to a few of these homeless people 
in person, talking to him, went down there and talking to him and asked him, well, you know, what can we do, uh, city people that as mayor, as me, as what can I do for you? I mean, what solution do y'all want? And most of them, they, half of them have to come, they don't want to be bothered with, and half of them they do. Uh, I would like to get with the Chamber of Commerce and maybe develop some ideas with their city management and, and project managers and uh, see what we can find something, a solution for them, home for these people to stay and maybe put them to work. Uh, you know, provide them AIDS, clinical and stuff like that, help them the prediction, help them in their addiction. Uh, you know, we need to do something uh, with these homeless people because there are people, uh, you know, in the Bible, we're supposed to give to the poor and help them uh, because they're human beings, they're, they're God's child. And, and we need to do these things uh, to step up and help these homeless people. Um, there's a lot of things I want to do with the city of Garland. Uh, again, we need to stop borrowing so much money to do projects and stuff and focus on our taxpayer expense money. Uh, we need to slow it down with the raising taxes. Uh, that's one of the things I'm trying to do with the city. Uh, promote more things in our city, bring more events to our city, Garland. Uh, lately, we haven't bring anything to our city, Garland, uh, you know, events like 4th of July and uh, Cinco de Mayo or Black History, uh, several of them, you know, that we can do to help our summer uh, people, our mamas and papa stores, our small business that are suffering right now with, with the pandemic that happened before uh, to bring money into our city and to help some of these uh, business ownership too. Um, and then whatever we have, you know, marketing with, saved up for the money, we can have the, a side to, we can use this money and continue to use this money to bring more events and stuff into our city of Garland. Um, let's see, um, you know, we need to do a lot of things with our city, uh, uh, clean up our areas, uh, especially around our districts. Our areas is looking really poor in some of our districts. Uh, some of the shopping malls, uh, centers are needs to be develop with some of these landlords and we need to be tough on some of these landlords until I do something with this property over here, bring some business in, advertise or uh, put something that this will be good for restaurant, different things on it to bring more people to shop around our city of Garland. We need to beautify our city of Garland. Uh, I just don't see very much of that um, yet. Uh, this is the things I'm going to do. Uh, to get with some of the landlords and get with our uh, councilmen and get with them out there on the field and check a lot of things over um, the uh, places that it needs to be cleaned up, get with some of the compliance people to get on there and clean up the place. I mean, these are the things that when I walk around are talking about our, our area, our, our district, uh, their neighborhoods, um, uh, and, you know, I have force and everything like that. Uh, about, you know, what can we do to bring in young uh, women and uh, men to join? And they said, you know, let's, let's put them on the school and have some of these uh, recruiters to recruit some of these new kids into, into the force. The same thing with the uh, police uh, fire, fire department. And these are the things I'm going to do with these things uh, once I get elected inside the office. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roelle. Thank you to both mayoral candidates. Next, I'd like to introduce the District 1 candidates. We have John Grimley, Angie Whitney, and Jeff Bass. John could not be with us this morning, but so we'll have our first speaker is Angie Whitney. Hi, everybody. Oh. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having us here. This is a lot of fun, and it's great to get to see faces again. Um, you know, I, my name is Angie Whitney. I 
have lived in Garland now nearly six years. I'm excited to say I'm coming up on September will be six years. Unfortunately, I am not living in my home right now. Uh, the power outages, you know, those 20 hour rolling blackouts, unfortunately froze all the pipes in my house. I had four pipes explode and four inches of water throughout the house. So I'm rebuilding the entire inside. I have a car, a brick carcass is what I have of a house. So I'm living the dream in a hotel with my three dogs. It's been a lot of fun, but they are Garland rescue dogs. <laughs> so I'm excited for that. Um, let me tell you a little bit about me so that you get to know me as a leader and you get to know who I am. So I own a training organization and my training organization, we train leadership skills, customer service skills and safety and first aid. So we've had the great fortune of training. I was trying to count it up last night as I went through it, 21 of the DCMA manufacturing companies in leadership and in customer service and safety. So as a leader, I have gotten to know the leadership of Garland, of the businesses of Garland and work directly with them. The, um, Challenges that we faced because of COVID have been exceptional. We went from having the best year we were ever going to have to having to do a full pivot because we were a fully face-to-face -face training organization and had to fully pivot to online training. And so that's why earlier when we were asking, what are the three dots? Those are ellipses. I spent my life on Zoom. And when we finish this, I'll go directly over. Um, as far as an accomplishment, I was selected to uh, as the excellent with the excellence in teaching award for Dallas College, and I see a lot of my Dallas cohorts there. I'm a contractor with Dallas College, which has afforded me the incredible opportunity to build the leadership program and the customer service program for the entire city of Garland. I've had the opportunity to train the entire. Uh, let me take that back, to train more than 82% of the employees of the city of Garland, including the entire leadership staff in the city manager's office. So I've designed and developed the, both of the programs, the customer service program and the leadership program. As a result of that, I've gotten to know pretty much everyone in the city. I know the departments, I know how they work. And much like our uh, Mayor Scott LeMay said, it's you don't have to necessarily know how to fix it, but you have to know who to call to get it done. And it has been one phone call after another, Stan, as I go door to door meeting our Garland citizens. It's been fantastic. You know, they'll bring an issue to me and I'm able to pick up the phone and get it done there, which is something I've done even before I moved into the city of Garland. Um, to reflect back on what Mr. Garcia was saying, and I'm also a Garcia, I'm actually Angeles Whitney Garcia. My uh, mother is from Spain. My father is from the US, so mi primer idioma es español y lo hablo igual que hablo el inglés. And for those of you that didn't understand, I speak Spanish exactly the same as I speak English. And having been yelled at as a child in Spanish in one ear and English in the other, I, I can flip from one language to the other without even thinking about it because I had to try to follow the conversations between my grandparents and my parents all the time. And I think people always ask, they go, where, where do you get the energy? It's like, I'm not, I, my brain's always done this. So, you know, pardon me if sometimes I flip into the wrong language. I just try to grab the best word that there is out there to describe something. And sometimes the better words in English and sometimes it's in Spanish. And that has been something that has uh, really helped in, in developing my relationship with the businesses of Garland because what we discovered prior to my coming into the role of training with, with Richland College, now Dallas College, and also working with the Chamber through their Leadership Academy is that so often we miss a giant part of the staff and the working folks in Garland because they don't speak English or they don't speak English well enough to attend a leadership class. And so we've been able to develop leaders that might not have been able to be developed through the relationship that I've had with the chamber and been able to use the SDF grants, the money that's provided by the Texas Workforce Commission to help these businesses get stronger and better and create that synergy. So when you're looking for somebody to be your city council person that's got tenacity and that gets things solved and knows you to call, I am definitely that person. I did it long ago and I'm still doing it. So I appreciate your time and thank you. Thank you, Angie. And next we have Jeff Bass. Hello. 
There we go. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jeff Bass. I am very excited to be a, hang on, there's a window. There we go. I'm very, very excited to be a candidate for uh, City Council District 1. Uh, I moved to Garland in 2008 with my uh, wife, Heather, and my son, Preston, actually um, moved to Garland the day my son was born. So it's always real easy for me to remember what day I got my house here. Um, you know, I have fallen in love with this city. I believe in this city. I actually did grow up in the Dallas area, mainly in Carrollton. But Garland is, uh, has become my home. And, uh, you know, I believe the reason is because we have, you know, we have good neighbors. We have diverse neighborhoods. We have a positive business environment, great city services, and there are unlimited opportunities to serve, work with, and help our neighbors. Um, upon moving to Garland, it did not take long for me to get involved. Uh, happily, I was able to open a restaurant, open the Dickies Barbecue Pit in Garland seven years ago. Um, being a small business owner has uh, blessed me with the opportunity to meet so many great folks here. And I've learned firsthand about financial management and the stewardship required to be successful. And encouraged by the positive attitude I saw in so many people in Garland, I uh, was looking for ways to get more involved in the greater uh, community. And uh, so I joined the Garland Chamber of Commerce and then I uh, enrolled in Leadership Garland. I proudly graduated in class 34 and, you know, and I still uh, chair committees for that program. I've chaired the steering committee and I currently chair the alumni committee. And um, many of the connections that I made there introduced me to more opportunities to uh, participate and serve in our city. And since then, I have served as a board member on the Garland Habitat for Humanity, uh, as well as an advisory board member for uh, GISD Global Business Initiative. Um, I attended the Garland Citizens Fire Academy, and uh, that was an amazing experience. And today, I still serve as a board member of the Garland Citizens Fire Club alongside our mayor, Scott LeMay. Um, most recently, I finished serving four years as a board member on the Garland Chamber of Commerce and uh, Garland Economic Development Steering Committee. I understand that giving back to the community is for the benefit of the greater good. My background as a business owner, coupled with years of volunteer service in our city, make me an ideal candidate to serve the citizens of District 1 on City Council. I'm committed to bringing common sense leadership to the council from our district, focusing on new ideas, searching for better ways of doing business, continuing commitment to our streets, roads, and infrastructure, supporting safe and sustainable neighborhoods, and I want Garland to be a place where people want to work, play, and live. And my platform is based around this premise. Keep Garland moving forward by maintaining progress on our $423 million bond program. As uh, Mayor LeMay mentioned, you know, it stagnates if you don't, if you don't keep, uh, keep progress on it. Keeping Garland safe with well-funded and well-trained first responders, attracting new visitors and new residents. And, uh, you know, I believe, that, I believe that Garland is a microcosm of America. We have a diverse population and we must embrace what makes us unique and work together toward a harmonious future. I believe that Garland has outstanding amenities such as Firewall Golf Course, Winters Park Soccer Complex, our new state-of-the-art GISD Natatorium, and our hiking and biking trails. And we must cultivate our amenities to continue to attract people to visit and to move to Garland. I believe that City Council is a team representative of the city of Garland as a whole. And I have a great team that supports me as well. I have endorsements from the Garland Firefighters Association, Garland Police Association, former Garland Mayor Jamie Ratliff, former Garland Mayor Lori Dodson, former <coughs> Garland uh, District 1 Councilman David Gibbons, former District 1 Councilman Tim Campbell, the Metro Tex Association of Realtors, and the Apartment Association of Greater Dallas. Garland, I'm sorry, my, my, <laughs> my background is going in and out because I have dogs walking around the light in this room. <laughs> Uh, you know, Garland is a, uh, it's a great city with a lot to offer. And I have witnessed this through my involvement with the chamber, with the city, with the school district, with first responders and with volunteering. I want everyone to be as proud of Garland as I am. And although I'm running for a district one council seat, I am looking to the future for all of Garland. Everything Gar starts with Garland's success. I have a proven track record of successfully representing the citizens of Ga Garland and will continue that on city council. And if you look at my background in leadership and community service, I feel that I am the ideal candidate to represent District 1 on Garland City Council. Um, you can see what I've been up to on my Facebook page or on my website, jeffbass.org. And you can always reach out to me. I've put my phone number in the chat. Um, 
My phone number is 469-831-5620. And yes, that is one of the many things I learned from, uh, from our mayor, Scott LeMay, is to constantly communicate with our citizens and let them know how to reach us. Um, you know, in District 1, I have knocked on over 800 doors so far. So if I haven't reached your door and you're a voter, I'll be getting to you soon. And uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you to our District 1 candidates. And next, I'd like to introduce our District 3 candidates. We have Ed Moore, Angela Graham West, PC Matthews, and Vicki High. Our first candidate to speak will be Ed Moore. Good morning, everyone. I am Ed Moore. My wife, Diane, and I have lived in South Rollin for about 17 years. We have three children, eight grands, and four great-grands. Our grandchildren attended and graduated school in Coral Elementary, Miles Middle, Lakeview, Centennial, and my son and his wife still continue to live here in Garland. I want to operate uh, several small businesses here in Garland. Ed Morton's Risk Management Solutions and Order of Catering. I attend and serve as a discipleship pastor in my home church, St. Luke Community United Methodist. We call it The Luke. I serve as a senior pastor in the United Methodist Church, Kentucky Annual Conference for 15 years. I am a military veteran, honorably discharged from the United States Army, and I functioned as a community servant leader in a variety of leadership roles over the past 15 years. And so when the question is asked, why do I want to be a Garland City Council person? I love public service. I love Garland and being involved in my community. And that's an intangible, but it really does matter to bring energy and enthusiasm to the job, along with ideas and experience. And I'm not just saying that uh, I love service either. I love the results that service you see, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life after I graduated from high school. I decided to enlist in the United States Army, and I think that that proved to be one of the greatest decisions that I ever made. I learned in the military, don't expect others to do for you what you can do for yourself. I learned discipline, something I think that we all can stand some of. I learned to roll up my sleeves and get involved. And if I wanted to be a change agent and make things happen, I needed to be that agent myself. And so since arriving in Garland, that's pretty much what I've done. I've rolled up my sleeves and I've gotten involved. I am president, president, presently the president of my HOA, Emerald Lake Estates Homeowners Association, neighborhood crime watch coordinator. I served on the Garland Community Multicultural Commission. I went through the Garland Citizens Police Academy was appointed to the Eastern Hills Advisory Committee. I recorded countless study groups in the New Exchange Club of Grawl and Board of Directors. I've project managed the Multicultural Commission's Mosaic Festival, project managed the Grawl and Labor Day Kids Barbecue Cook-Off. I'm sure I've seen many of you out there while doing that. Project managed the New Exchange Awards and Appreciation Dinner volunteered to serve on various charities here in the community, Good Sam, Act Memorial Food Pantry, uh, Glow Overnight uh, Shower Station. You see, I didn't just start public service. It seemed like it's really been a lifelong journey. So what's important presently? For all, we need to make sure everyone gets vaccinated against the coronavirus as quickly as possible so that our way of life and economy can get back to normal post-pandemic. Within the scope and authority of influence that we have as a council, we also need to make sure that we have reliable city services. We don't wanna have the major utility problems experienced during this past February's winter storm. That storm showed us really how prepared and unprepared we are. We must continue to maintain sustainable infrastructure, things like our streets and all by supporting our first responders, that's police and fire, through assuring they have a state-of-the-art equipment, training, competitive incomes, health and retirement benefits. Public safety is at its best when we have a prepared first responder team. And we have a vision for the future. A vision for long-term planning is key to business opportunities, neighborhood revitalization, and economic prosperity on Garland's southern border. 
Boulevard, Hill, Bob Town, Zion. And as already stated, we have to record a catalyst study group, creating a vision for growth along the highway that cuts right through the middle of my district. I understand how that infrastructure along the corridor must be developed in order to attract the kind of business growth and development, redevelopment that we desire. I know our mayor, Scott LeMay. I know the city council members, and I know how to work with them to get the necessary resources to bring vision into reality. And finally, I understand the importance of communication with the community, being accessible, available, and accountable. When you call, you're going to get an answer. 214-243-3053. That's my number. And so I want to be that council person that furthers the vision for economic growth, business opportunities, and revitalization to Garland's Southern Corridor. My name is Ed Moore, and I'm a candidate for District 3 Garland City Council, and I'm asking for your vote. I've been endorsed by the Garland Fire as well as police departments, and we're look, looking forward to just working in the community to make it the very best that it can possibly be. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. And our next candidate for District 3 is Angela Graham West. Angela Graham West. I am relatively new to the Garland area. I arrived here two years ago, along with my husband and uh, two daughters who now live are grown and they live in the uh, Dallas Metro area. Uh, I don't have, you know, I, I wanna give you a background, some background information about myself, but I don't have uh, a lot of endorsements to give you. Uh, I will say that I have my bachelor's, my master's and my PhD from Kansas State University in New York and uh, a university in New York. I, uh, I am a, currently a business owner. I am with, a large investment firm, and um, I own my own part of the business. I manage roughly about $50 million worth of uh, assets. Um, I uh, came here to Garland with, from Dallas with the idea that I, I really wanted, a, this, is, this is a beautiful area, and I, and I looked around and I thought this was probably the best arena that I could actually um, live in. The, um, my background in finance will, gave me a little bit of insight and the fact that I've lived particularly all over the world and I travel quite a bit has given me a greater insight as to what all of the potential that we can possibly have here in Garland. Um, we have uh, Garland and, I'm running specifically in District 3, and in District 3, we have specific um, needs and uh, very, uh, just so many, so much potential that, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a real shame that it's actually going to waste. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the possibility for business development while maintaining the property values and the beautification in the area. I'm also, um, I'm also looking at, uh, as far as the budget is concerned, making sure that we work within our budget specifically um, without giving up too many of our resources and maintaining some others. Um, and finally, I would like to talk about, um, well, some of the other projects here. And I know that uh, some people are, you know, they're concerned about the homeless population, which is very important. We have, I've, I've heard of a number of cities actually pushing their homeless population into uh, um, Garland itself. So what we have to do is we do have to work and find a common sense, but also compassionate way of dealing with that. So the bottom line is, I would like you to consider a new person and vote for me within this district. And my door is always open. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And our next candidate is PC Matthews. Hello, good morning, everybody. Respected Mayor Scott Lee May, Mayor Candidate Royal Garcia, 
Chamber of Commerce officials such as Karina Olives, Emilia Carmen, and the Collins and other businessmen, and uh, my competitors, Yad Moore, Vicky, and Angela, and all my friends, business friends. Let me praise and thank God again for this wonderful time with you guys. Let me talk about my family first. I'm the fourth child of a family of five uh, children. My dad's name is KJ Chaco. My mom's name is Eliama Chaco. My elder sister, Mary Thomas. Then Tangama Joseph, PC Jose, and PC Matthew and Elizabeth, the youngest one. At the age of 24, I got behind for my livelihood to help my family and find a job for me. I worked with the Bahrain Defense Force as a civilian employee and assigned for U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in the Construction Division. It's called Middle East Africa Project Office. It was a big mission to finish Sheikh Issa military airbase. I had 15 years experience in the construction industry. We came to 2005 to U.S. here, initially lived in South Garland. And then I bought a house in uh, Las Colonias because of my uh, kids got school admission in uh, charter school or um, uplift uh, prep uh, school in Las Colonias. They all grown up. My daughter finished her NP. My second son, Ansel, got uh, dental school admission in Boston. My youngest one is still in the UT Arlington. My wife, Daisy, and is uh, working in uh, NICU, uh, plus B Dallas. Well, with my experience uh, in, with U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the 10 years in Texas Department of Insurance and UD Southwestern State in the finance side and construction side, I have a lot of professional, of professional background to serve our community here. And my community life means I was a student leader. I was a born leader. I was a high school leader. At the, uh, when I was in the high school, in the, it was a Hindu high school. Then I have been elected three times as a university union counselor from college to the university, Kerala University. And I was a board member of university union. Then I have been nominated by the minister to the Senate of Mahatma Gandhi University. Then in Bahrain, I was nominated by the education minister school board, uh, high school board, and uh, I served uh, three years in the board. And we had done international events there. And I was the president of charity and assistant association of parents, an organization uh, founded by myself and group of parents, helping a lot of parents. In here, I was the HIA president of Las Colonas two times. And uh, since I started my property business in 2014 in Garland, I moved to Garland last year. But even though I, I moved last year, my most of my time I spent in Garland doing property business and. Uh, 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 spending time with the business friends and uh, many other programs we have conducted through the organization I work with. It's called World Malayali Council. It's a 501 c organization, uh, uh, PVSA recognized organization. We used to do blood drive, medical camp, and cultural events, a lot of things in Garland, St. Thomas Catholic Church Hall, and uh, other MGM Hall in Garland, South Garland side. So we found our finally home in Garland to can, can, uh, continue my, my life. So instead of going to HOA, my friends advised me, why don't you start your career in political career in a, in a city council? That's, that's the first step of the district three. So I just want to work for the people. In my website, pcmatthew.com, I envisioned everything. Promoting small business is one of my agendas. And also attracting bigger companies, employees to Garland is one of the other agendas because to, for employment and business opportunity. Small business can do subcontract with the bigger companies here. And I wanted to make Garland as a hub for businessmen. People from Plano and Richardson and City of Dallas, they had to come to Garland to bring their business up, meet our people here, and help our businessmen to grow here and help people to get employment. And I have systematically return my vision, my website, pcmatthew.com. Please visit and uh, help continue my effort in my political career uh, to work for the people and uh, for, the, for the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, PC. Our next candidate will be Vicki High. 
Good morning. I am Dr. Vicki High, a candidate for the District 3 City Council seat. I want to thank the Chamber for hosting this forum to give citizens a choice in the voice that represents them. I am a native Texan and have lived in Garland, Texas, District 3 for almost 24 years. We have raised our three children in Garland, worship in Garland, and try to keep our money in Garland as much as possible. As a former educator in Garland ISD in charge of students and staff, I am passionate about ensuring diversity, equity, and inclusion for all citizens. I have a lot of related experience that transfers seamlessly into the role of a city council member. My years of experience and knowledge allows me to advocate for your concerns regarding the availability of affordable housing, improved road conditions, access to public transportation, availability of jobs, and quality uh, for our K-12 schools, to name just a few. I want to advocate for all citizens, just as I advocated for your children and grandchildren in public education. Yes, I'm in it to win it, not for the position, but for the people who are the nucleus of our city. I'm a recently retired Garland ISD administrator where I helped to educate America's future for over 23 years, both in Garland and Dallas independent school districts. My background and skill set include program administration, project management, relationship and performance management, community partnerships, and data analysis. I am a former professor for the Dallas College, and I currently serve as a diversity subject matter expert for Western Governors University, as well as a realtor. I am the youngest of five children and a first generation college graduate, having attended the University of North Texas with a Bachelor of Arts degree in communications, Southern Methodist University with a Master of Liberal Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies, and North Central University with a doctoral degree in Educational Leadership. I believe knowledge is power and I am a proponent of college career, workforce, and military readiness. I have been the wife of Steve High Sr. for 35 years, and we have three grown children and three beautiful grandchildren. We have lived and grown our family in the District 3 community in Garland for almost 24 years and are members of the Mount Hebron Missionary Baptist Church. I ask for your early vote beginning on Monday to represent you and your concerns on the city council, where together we can make a good city great. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki, and thank you to all our District district 3 candidates. Uh, next, we have District 6, that's Robert Vera, and he's unopposed. Um, he was unable to join us today. District 7, we have Dylan Hedrick, he is unopposed. And District 8, Robert Allen Smith, unopposed. So thank you to all our city council candidates and we'll now proceed to the Garland ISD Board of Trustees. Also, I wanna remind you to post your questions so we can go over them at the end. We'll start with place four. Our candidates are Jed Reed, Daphne Stanley, David Larrick Smith. Our first candidate will be Jed Reed. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. All right. Uh, my name is Jed Reed. I'm running for place four on the Garland Board of Trustees. I bring to the patrons of the district knowledge, experience, and leadership. These three characteristics that I bring to the board uh, are especially important during this time of post-COVID redevelopment. So let's look at each of those. Knowledge. I've grown up in the Garland ISD. I'm a product of Watson Elementary, Kimberlin Elementary, Memorial Middle School, and I'm a proud graduate of South Garland High Schools. Go Titans. I want to acknowledge that I also attended Texas Tech University. I got my master's degree in public administration from Texas A&M Commerce, formerly East Texas State University. And I've done over 80 hours of postgraduate work in education, personnel, and business. As part of that experience of knowledge is also intertwined into my uh, service and in my uh, role as an employee within the educational system. I wanna talk about that experience. I started my educational 
career as a teacher at Jackson, O'Banion, and then Lakeview High School for 18 years. I transitioned to the Louisville ISD in 1993 and served as a teacher, an assistant principal, assistant director of HR, and then a director of human resources within the school district. In 2007, I returned to the Garland ISD and served as the director of elementary human resources and also as executive director of human resources, at which time uh, I ran for the school board in 2016 and was elected. As to leadership, I've been the president and chief officer of two major professional associations within the state that have dealt with education, the Texas Association of School ad, uh, Personnel Administrators and the Association of Texas uh, Professional Educators. In those roles, I've interacted with state leaders and local leaders in the discussion of educational policy and looking out for the benefit of both our students and our teachers. Locally, I've served on a number of boards and commissions within the city of Rowlett and the city of Garland, having been a proud uh, graduate of Leadership Garland 1 and also Leadership Rowlett 10. Serving on these boards and commissions, I have uh, seen the growth and need of collaboration between the city and the school district. Now, in my previous service on the board of the Garland Independent School District, I was very pleased in being able to move forward several accomplishments. And that was includes the selection of a new superintendent, establishing specific student performance goals on which to evaluate the superintendent and the district, of looking forward to a full day pre-K on selected campuses, expanding student programs and support for dyslexia, student literacy, uh, English language learners, expansion and uh, continued support for career and college education. It's important to understand that in Garland ISD, we focus on college readiness and career readiness and military service. So all three aspects are key and important. It's not just focused on college bound students. And also during my tenure, the property tax in the Garland ISD was lowered from $1.46 per 100 in 2018 to $1.39 in 2019. And with compression and other actions, it will be even lower in uh, 2020. So goals for the future. I wanna steadily focus on safe reopening of the schools and post COVID uh, conditions. Uh, safety and instruction and bringing the kids back and surfacing our staff is important. We've got to re-engage the staff in in-depth review of what we can move forward with in uh, how we instructed students during the COVID period. I believe it's gonna take us at least three years to recover the academic standings that we had in the post-COVID world. Uh, in addition to focusing on that key part, we also need to work with local, state, and federal leaders in creating a more accessible and equitable access to the internet and to digital learning. Uh, we need to be active in state funding issues. The Texas legislature is currently in session. Immediately upon election, it's going to be important to be engaged in those things. So to summarize, I bring forward experience. I bring forward experience in the classroom, engagement in the community, and a example of leadership, not only on the board, but within the community and my profession. So I ask for your vote. Uh, ask you to, to talk to your friends and relatives, and I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you, Jed. Our next candidate is Daphne Stanley. Good morning. I thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be here um, for the sponsors and the chamber as well. I'm Daphne Stanley, and as I am running for the open seat place four for board trustees. The school board is responsible for keeping harmony throughout the district and the community that supports us, including the ones that no longer have children in our district, but are still truly passionate about our education system. I want parents and staff to be a part of the decisions and not just the ones that have to live with the consequences. And together, I feel that we can bring parents back into our schools and teachers back in charge of their classrooms. <laughs> you will find I am not your average or traditional school board candidate. I went to school during a time when a one size fits all was the norm. In my experience as a student who did not fit the mold of traditional learning has made me unique among my fellow candidates today. 
It also gives me a very valuable perspective as an added voice on the school board, and it's a perspective that's not currently represented. I have raised two young men, both through public, charter, and private school systems. And most recently, I am having the pleasure of guiding my granddaughter through the GISD system. I've had to advocate for my son and now my granddaughter for assessment, diagnosis, and the support that's needed for their success due to learning disabilities. I also have one son that I had to advocate for due to a gifted learner. These experiences have prepared and motivated me to want more for our next generation. I've lived in Garland for the last nine years and I've served one year on the Garland Parks Board. I currently sit on the board of the Garland Symphony Orchestra as well as the Garland Parks Foundation. My husband is a graduate of the GISD, Go Titans, and has served for the city council in Garland for four years and Sachse City Council. I have come to love this community that I have been able to participate in, Saxe, Rowlett, and Garland. Why me? Well, I'm currently living the education process within the GISD, and I don't believe that that voice is a strong enough voice within our current board. Here's some of the questions and concerns that I get from the citizens I've been talking with, and some of the questions even I have struggled with. Access to our elected members of the board. This does not mean watching them vote. It means having many meaningful input during the discussions before discussions and decisions are made. Open government does not mean making decisions in executive sessions so that the board can show a unified front. Aging buildings. Our average age of our elementary schools is 43 years, middle school 46 and high school 43. And yet we are unable to get full accounting of how each campus performs financially. And without the understanding of operating costs per site, how do we prioritize capital investments? Budget shortfalls. We need an open and honest dialogue about the future cuts based on the failure of the TRE. We're operating in a significant budget deficit. How are we quantifying the successes of every program within the district? And why are we looking at more and more programs when we potentially can't even fund the ones that we have? Accountability. I've not been able to find how the board measures success with the curriculums and the programs that are implemented. And while I support trying new things, we still need to have accountability for the success or the failures of those programs and or curriculums. COVID relating loss, learning losses. This is not a quick or easy fix. And we have to lean on individually camp, individual campuses for their input of where the struggle is and where our additional resources are needed. And how we can do this district wide through some sort of a test is challenging for me to, to cons I, I just struggle with that one. We can't let this turn into long-term challenges for our students. And with many of our learning disabled students, this could be a very long-term challenge when they are consistently below school grade level anyways. Graduation rates, we hear about the high graduation rates, but we don't hear about of those graduates, only 69% can meet the CCMR, which is your college career and military resource standards. And 65% of them who enroll in post-secondary, only 28 actually earn a degree. Yes, the school board's function is to hire the superintendent and the superintendent hires administration and staff, but I believe that the ultimate responsibility lies with the board. I ask for your vote. Thank you, Daphne. Our next candidate is David Larrick Smith. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Good? Awesome. Um, first of all, let me just thank every one of my, my supporters and the people who have come out and, and, and been in my corner through this process. Um, thank the chamber, uh, thank the sponsors of this event. Uh, just thank all of the active citizens and community members who are have gotten behind us in this process. It's it's incredibly um, humbling uh, to get all of the support when you when you when you do something like this, throw your hat in the ring for public office. So thank you all so much. Uh, thank you uh, again. My name is David Larrick Smith, and uh, I too am a Garland product. 
uh, born and raised um, here in the, uh, the Garland area. And uh, I just wanna talk real quickly about who I am, why I'm running and why you should vote for me. Um, like I said, uh, grew up right here in the Garland, uh, in the Garland area, went to Daughtery Elementary, Memorial Middle School in South Garland, uh, South Garland, just like Mr. Jed there, and um, had an opportunity to uh, go to New York, uh, earned a couple of basketball scholarships and, and went to Western Texas College where I earned an associate's degree, and then on to Brooklyn College in New York where I earned a, a bachelor's. And so I spent 10 years in New York um, doing a little bit of everything, business development, uh, project management, sports management. I actually started a company called Cityscape Productions and did professional skating and kind of helped, uh, um, uh, was a catalyst to what we now know as the action sports industry. And so uh, upon coming back in 2000, um, um, I, 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 I got a hold to uh, my old basketball coach, Garland Nichols, rest in peace. And uh, I said, look, how do I make my contribution? How do I come back to uh, the city that raised me and make my contribution? And so I became a classroom teacher. And I thought about what my purpose was and what made me come alive and what helped me to understand um, you know, and, and embrace the, the, the principle of to whom much has been given, much is also required. And so uh, I decided at that point to get into education and to be uh, an advocate for education. And so I spent some time in the classroom. And, and then when um, opportunity came to, to go back into the private sector, I became a personal development, positive psychology coach and consultant. And so the reason I'm running is because I want to share my life experience and I wanna share the information that has helped me to become a fully functioning, critical thinking member of our society. I think that is what the goal of education should be is to teach our children how to think, not so much teach them what to think. And even though obviously the board's job is to hire the superintendent, um, you know, set tax policy um, and implement the TEA mandated curriculum, uh, I will advocate for programs within the district um, like consumer family sciences, um, social emotional learning to help our children to develop those critical thinking skills so that when they leave our care after 12 years, they can be fully functioning, critical thinking members of our society. I think there's a huge unspoken um, crisis in our country and that's the coping crisis that uh, Americans and people don't know how to cope. And I think uh, education is definitely one of the places where we need to help our children um, to, to learn those skills. So again, they can function when they leave. Um, what qualifies me? You know, why, why, why should you vote for me? Um, like I said, in the last 20 years, I have spent that time volunteering, um, developing programs. I'm also the founder of the Smith Foundation for Excellence, and we produce eight community-based programs that are focused on community vitality and um, helping to make our society uh, a more verdant and, and egalitarian place. Uh, we have safety initiatives, block block party initiatives, uh, youth mentor programs, all designed again to, um, to just help people to embrace their role as citizens in a community. You know, our, our mantra is doing nothing is not an option. And so we encourage people to get involved in the community one way or the other, whether that's with your church or with that scouting or, or uh, with the homeless or one of our programs. But whatever that might be, we encourage people to get involved. And so over the last 20 years, I've spent my time volunteering, um, working in the community, um, uh, sitting on different boards. I've worked with the um, um, uh, campus-wide improvement team at Tola Elementary, uh, the African-American Advisory Committee at the GISD. Um, and so I've spent my time uh, trying to be a solution generator for the problems uh, facing our community. And so, again, I, I would ask, based on that body of work, for your vote. My name is David Large Smith, and um, uh, I hope that you will come out and vote for me during uh, the campaign. Thank you. Thank you, David. And thank you to all our Place 4 candidates. Uh, next, we'll move to Place 6. We have Robert Selders, which is the incumbent, and Bob Duckworth. 
First, we'll hear from candidate Robert Selders. Good morning, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay, good. First, I would like to thank God for the opportunity to be here. Um, and thanks to the Garland Chamber of Commerce and the sponsor for hosting this candidates forum. My name is Robert Selders Jr. and I'm board president of the Garland ISD Board of Trustees. I'm running for re-election for my third term as Garland ISD Board of Trustees, place six, and would appreciate your support and your vote. Just a little bit about me. I've been married to my wife, Keela, for nearly 25 years, and we have three beautiful daughters who are all students of Garland ISD. I've been a resident and taxpayer within the Garland ISD, living in Rowlett for 22 years, and I'm a small business owner. I've owned 3Q Fitness CrossFit Garland located in downtown Garland for 13 years, and we've been a member of the Garland Chamber of Commerce for about as long. Prior to board service, I was a parent co-chair of the Garland ISD Student Health Advisory Council and a member of Leadership Garland Class 31, the best class for real. Since being elected in 2015, I've been deeply involved in school board associations to continue my education as a trustee and serving in leadership roles at the local, state, and national level. Why do I want to continue serving as Garland ISD trustee play six? We live in challenging times and there are more challenges ahead. I firmly believe that we must work to continue moving the district forward by focusing on healthy children who have a safe and healthy learning environment that will allow them to grow and develop healthy minds with the tools and skills needed to be prepared for college, career, military, or life so that they can become contributors to a healthy community. Education is a critical gateway to improve personal quality of life, community enrichment, and economic vitality. And so I firmly believe that every Garland ISD student deserves an exceptional education. As one of the state's master trustees, along with over five years of experience as Garland ISD trustee, I believe my diversity of life experience and diversity of thought have given me a unique insight and perspective into educational governance and leadership. And these are strengths that I bring with me as I seek re-election for my third term. As Place 6 trustee, I've demonstrated an open, inquisitive, disciplined, passionate, and empathetic nature. I value building strong relationships, working collaboratively, making data-driven decisions, listening actively, and communicating effectively to achieve high-performance results. The increases in student achievement over the past four years or five years that I've served on the Board of Trustees all point to that, along with high graduation rates, as well as uh, safety and security of our schools. We have the GRCTC and early college and P-TECH programs that also give us the ability to partner with businesses in the business community to build a stable and competent workforce. Now, we still have more work to do, and being your Garland ISD trustee place six allows me to continue serving our community at high level and district residents can rest assured that they have an advocate in the position who will listen and will help ensure every Garland ISD student has access to an exceptional education. Important issues facing the district. Increasing student achievement across all student groups in the face of learning loss exacerbated by COVID-19 global pandemic. Funding universal pre-K. Ensuring our special education programs facilitate improved outcomes and student management practices that are equitable and restorative for each student. Why should you vote for me? As I shared when I began, we live in challenging and unpredictable times with more on the horizon. I feel it's important to not only have stable leadership, but also leadership that looks to build strong relationships with our Tri-Cities and is passionate about serving the needs of all students. I'm a proven leader with the skills, experience, and demonstrated progress in improving student achievement while expanding student opportunities and access for engagement while maintaining high graduation rates. I've worked as part of a strong, passionate team of individuals who are innovative to help Garland ISD make unprecedented gains these last five years. And I'm running for re-election to continue this work and to move the district forward. Now, I understand that not all students will attend college and that we have to make sure that they are also prepared for career, the military, and life after graduation. I have been and will always be an accessible and strong advocate for all students and our Garland ISD community. And I believe that all students deserve to have access and the opportunity to an exceptional education. I'm already actively engaged in the work. The pandemic created significant learning loss, addressing that as a priority. Thank you, Garland Chamber of Commerce and the forum sponsor 
And thanks to all the citizens of our Tri-Cities of Garland, Rowlett, and Saxe who've supported me and those who are here today. I'm Robert Selders Jr. and I would appreciate your support and your vote for me as Garland ISD trustee play six. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Our next candidate is Bob Duckworth. Good morning. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce and Anita. Uh, I'm Bob Duckworth, your candidate for place six. And I've been very active and engaged with the district for several years. And some of my comments are gonna be based on some of that engagement. Uh, I'm a lifetime resident of Garland. I have an extensive background in banking for 47 years. So I think I bring some uh, financial uh, knowledge and history uh, to my uh, uh, run for this uh, board position. I've had experience in operations, management, lending, documentation, laws and regulations, policies and procedures, and most of all, I understand what good customer service is. I'm a father and a grandfather uh, who has experienced the victories and challenges of raising and educating children. Married to my lovely wife, Cherry, for 59 years, and uh, she's been a, a rock to my, uh, my uh, these years that God has blessed us. Uh, I'm a father and grandfather who has experienced the victories and challenges of raising and educating children. When children begin school, they have already learned many values and principles from parents and families that the education system must deal with. Some may not align with public education process. One example is the use of bad language. And I've had heard a lot of people comment to me about this. If students and teach, I believe students and teachers have a right to a profanity free environment in Garland ISD. In fact, the student handbook states this, Students shall not use profanity or vulgar language or make obscene gestures. If the student handbook prohibits the use of profanity, why do I hear students, students and parents concerns for the flagrant use of, of profanity in our schools? What can we do? I would love to be a part of that, that challenge and see what we can do to, to change that. You know, I haven't heard one profanity or a vulgar word used this entire morning. So it proves that we can function as human beings without that kind of language. If you elect me, I will gladly represent all three GISD communities. I will, I will strive to represent you by bringing transparency, equ equity, access, and change to the district. Transparency is something that many of you have heard me use that term many times, and it's very important to me. I want to provide leadership and direction to provide a quality education for all students of Garland ISD. I will strive to ensure that actions of the board are as transparent and understandable as possible to each of you who elect me. If one has an interest in what is going on in the district, they should be able to access information without inordinate expense. If your tax dollars are used in most cases, you have every right to know the details without cost to you. I want a, a personal experience. I filed two public information requests and I was asked by the district to pay $2,304 and $4,104 for that information. If elected, I will engage the district to stop these kinds of charges for public information. If it's public, it should be available at very minimal cost. I would be glad to assist anyone to learn how to file a public information request if you have a question uh, that you cannot get an answer to. The district is in the process of uh, studying uh, special education and has just hired a uh, special education leader and a public consulting group to lead that study. Closure of the PAC was something that, uh, that was, was discussed by staff in meetings. And, uh, and many in the community that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm aware of there were very involved in that uh, facility. It's the Pathfinder Achievement Center, one of the uh, facilities for some of our most challenged students, some of the beautiful children that the term I use is for the grace of, but for the grace of God, there go I. So they deserve our, uh, whatever we can do for them. And I, I want to be a part of that decision as we move forward in the district. I believe the district is, one, has, is in one of the most challenging times in recent history regarding the education process. Uh, several have alluded to that. And sadly, I'm not sure anyone has all the answers as to where students are in their educational process. A recent Dallas Morning News article stated only 44% of seniors are going to return to end school. GID's Trustees discussed a virtual school program at their district affairs committee yesterday and may come back to the board on April the 27th. Some of the financial challenges that we've all heard about and heard discussed, 
uh, last evening, I listened to the Finance Committee discuss the budget and there's numerous challenges coming in, in, in the future. And there were a lot of different things. I encourage you to go listen to that. Uh, I, uh, uh, one of the things I would like to do is, is, is to uh, present a no tax increase bond election to provide a new ag training center for students. I was very upset at this program and was intentionally left out of the 2014 bond program. Again, thanks to Garland Chamber of Commerce for hosting this candidate forum, and I request your vote on uh, May the 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, and thank you to our Place 6 candidates. Uh, next, we have Place 7, running unopposed, Wesley Johnson. At this time, we will take, um, we'll go through the chat and try to uh, answer all the questions. A lively chat box here. Uh, let's see. We have um, one from Lewis Moore to everyone, um, excuse me, to Scott and Roel. How will the recent changes in the Economic Development Office enable the city to benefit all residents, not only business owners and property owners? but subgroups, especially our burgeoning Latino community. Who's, who's first? <laughs> uh, Me? Scott, would you like to address Okay, okay. First, <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, our, our economic development goes here in the city, uh, you know, we, yes, we've had some personnel uh, changes in, in direction where the, you know, the city brought that uh, under our umbrella. Um, I, I think as far as, you know, to address the question directly, as far as the, the Latino community, uh, I think the best thing that we could do is uh, facilitate a meeting between uh, the Latino leadership in the city through GAFA. Uh, and I would be happy to facilitate a meeting through that group, through our city economic development and the chamber uh, because I think a lot of the times people don't know, you know, they don't know what is available as far as assistance or guidance or direction. Um, and at the same time, uh, by inviting those groups in, we would learn uh, who's out there who needs the assistance. Uh, so I think uh, I think facilitating a meeting like that would be fantastic. Uh, and I think it would be very beneficial for the, the small business owners coming up or, and, and ultimately for the city. Thank you, Scott. And Roel, would you like to address that? Yes, uh, a lot of it, um, uh, I communicate with a lot of the Hispanic people around the area on the east side, all over the side of uh, Garland. And, you know, a lot of them is not, we're not communicating with them uh, at all uh, and letting them know what's going on with our city Garland uh, about, you know, develop business in our city, um, you know, talking to them, uh, finding out what they need. And a lot of it, they do read uh, the uh, Garland Express uh, newspaper that we have gone out, I think once a month, uh, but some of the areas are not getting it. I don't know why they're not getting the newspaper in the area that they're getting it so they can know what's going on with the city of Garland information. Uh, two is that the paper is, uh, not in Hispanic, so some of these people can uh, know what's going on. Uh, I want to address that too, that once I'm in mayor and take office, that I will appoint it to the uh, Express, uh, Garden Express, by putting in some of that in, into Spanish. Uh, it, it has a lot of pages, everything is so big and it needs to be cut down a little bit and put it into Spanish and let some of these people will know what was going on in the city of Garland. Uh, again, a lot of people are, our second language is Spanish, guys. I mean, you know, that's all over the world. Um, and a lot of people do understand Spanish and it's going through our school too. You know, we educated them too with their Spanish second language. So I think we need to address that with, if we're gonna have a newspaper of Express that we need to follow up and put that in Spanish and let our community, especially our Hispanic people and all, and all kinds of races too, to know what's going on. Okay, thank you, Scott and Roel. Um, our next question is from Russell Duckworth. 
uh, questions for the trustee candidates. A previous GISD board president admitted that trustees routinely violate the Open Meetings Act. Um, and then for current trustees, is your um, TOMA training certificate on file with the district as required? And do you agree that there have been violations of the Open Meetings Act during your term? Well, uh, I'll go ahead and get started with that um, as I'm currently sitting on the board. Uh, I don't agree with the, with the, pre pre the proposition that uh, the current, the former board president did say the statement that has been referenced by uh, the question asker. However, I think it was not necessarily a good turn of phrase. I went back through because of this and looked at length at any type of electronic message, text message things. I can't find a single violation of the Open Meetings Act or a walking quorum that we've engaged in over the entire time I'm on the board. We've had multiple um, trainings from our, our board attorney regarding compliance with the Open Meetings Act. As far as I can tell, everyone is doing the compliance that's necessary for that. So I'm not certain what he was thinking at the time when, he, when that statement was made. I don't agree with the characterization. I think that we are as compliant as any board I've seen throughout the state and people take it very seriously. And I know I do, and I, I can't speak for President Selders, but I think he believes it too. And so, um, no, I'm not, again, you would have to ask the individual who said it. Uh, I have kind of basically shook his head and he's like, I don't know what I was saying <laughs> at the time. You, sometimes when you do eight, we did eight hour session yesterday at the board of trustees and that can drag on you and you end up saying something that you may later on say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that, but that's the only thing I can attribute it to, but no, I do not believe that there are any violation, any systematic or habitual violations of the Open Meetings Act. Wes, thank you. Anyone else want to comment on that question? Just to add to what Mr. Johnson said, I, I also uh, disagree with the characterization of what the question asker um, shared. Um, but as board president, I made sure that we actually reviewed that with our, um, our board attorney um, to come in and talk to us about the Texas Open Meeting Act and making sure that we are in compliance always. Uh, so again, you'd have to ask the individual who made that statement uh, what they were, were intending and the context of it all. So. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Anita? Yes, Jed. Uh, while I am not currently on the board, I have been on the board. Uh, I, I agree with Robert and Wes that there is no malicious intent amongst board members, that there is no devious, uh, darkened uh, project of secret communications. I think individuals who uh, believe that are seeking some tool of attack because they believe that uh, there are sinister things going on because they are not uh, being catered to or allowed to operate outside the rules and regulations of what the state allows and also what uh, our local board policies allow. Uh, we are our human, we can make errors, we can make mistakes. I don't believe that it's a preconceived plan nor an intentional plan if it did occur. Uh, as part of an open records request, I did submit uh, all of my communications and all of my emails, uh, which the district controls since I no longer have a school account. And uh, I feel very confident that in my personal operations that I was not in violation and that the allegation is uh, fruitless. Uh, as to uh, service on the board, it's important. It's key, it's uh, based upon knowledge and respect and it's uh, based upon listening to uh, the community. So I appreciate the time. Thank you, Jed. Thank you, Karen. If we have a, no other comments, I'll move on to the next Anita. question. Bob Duckworth. Yes, Bob. In, in reference to the question, uh, I'm, I'm one that has, ra has raised that question. And if, if the gentleman that made that statement uh, didn't mean that, I wish he would publicly state what he did mean and, and clear that up for the public. Uh, uh, I don't mean anything malicious, but if it was stated, 
uh, I was wondering, and I was I made the public information request, and I was one that was, as I mentioned in my discussion a while ago, was asked to pay an exorbitant amount of money for the information uh, and to clarify whether they had or had not. So if the district had been open with me and provided that information, perhaps we could have clarified that. But I'm not going to pay $4,000 for information that should be declared as public information. And that's one of my reasons for running for this board. I, I want to be sure that I want to be assured or the people that elect me to be assured when you watch a board meeting that you'll hear enough information to know what they're talking about, what they're approving, what the amount of the of the, uh, of the item being discussed is uh, nothing, nothing malicious from me. Uh, I just want to make sure that the patrons out there that elect us have access to the trustees. Uh, I've had a challenge with that recently. Uh, and so I, I want to promise you uh, my full attention to you as, as a, uh, as a candidate for your, to serve you on this uh, board, that I will be there to, to listen to you and help you direct your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Our next question is uh, from Libby Odom to Roel. What committees have you been on or what work have you done to bring positive change to our city? Um, I've been, like I said, I've been a resident for 58 years and my community is the people. Uh, that's my experience. Uh, I've gone to some of the committees that they have, councilmen and stuff like that. They have meetings there when the COVID hit. Uh, I uh, do have a little experience, uh, you know, listening to them uh, again, uh, talking to the community of people and Hispanic and all kinds of races uh, and finding out what they need uh, and what they want for our city. That's more important is finding out what they need and what they want for our city. Uh, you have to listen to these people because these people are very important. Uh, they are, are, are people that that's care of our city. Uh, we need to address, to listen, and to step up and do these things that we need to do for our city people. Thank you. Thank you, Royal. Thank you, Royal. Our next question is from uh, Beach um, Panda uh, to uh, Royal. Were you aware that Garland has a dream center that helps the homeless? There are programs in churches that focus on the homeless that would welcome you to volunteer your support. Uh, I would love to volunteer a lot of them. Uh, I'm starting to get some uh, people are sending me some stuff and I'm in a process and getting some of the, uh, some of the churches and stuff like that. Uh, one of them is PC's uh, Matthew's uh, organization church about you know homeless people and that i'm going to join up with them uh there's catholic i'm a catholic saint joseph uh i'm going to more volunteer my, myself into the hungry people homeless people and do all i can to help these people uh that needs help for our city i mean our city i mean garland needs to step up and help these needs for our city people, especially the homeless people. And this is the thing I'm going to do once I get in the office. Thank you. Uh, we have time for just a couple of a couple more questions. Um, this one is from Dorothy Brooks. Question to the mayor and city council. Garland's medium age is 33, which is relatively young, yet our downtown design theater offerings and cultural offerings are geared toward older white residents. What would you propose to attract younger diverse residents? Um, mayor and city Garland candidates, Garland is 57% white, 14% black, 9% Asian, and 37% Hispanic. How will you increase the impact of such a diverse population? Why is there a need to do so? Again, that was a question to um, the mayor and city council. Okay, I, 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 I'll go first, I guess. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, I mean, to, to address the, uh, you know, the cultural and theater uh, offerings, I mean, those are a product of the groups uh, that put on those productions. Um, you know, but one thing uh, I think that we can do is uh, to promote that. And, and I, had, I had this conversation with Jennifer and Tom Wynn yesterday 
And I think what we need to really be focused on is bringing back the Mosaic Festival. Uh, we haven't had one since 2015, uh, where we bring all the, you know, we bring everybody together uh, and celebrate and discover uh, the the diversity and the integration that we have here in the city. I think that would be a great, uh, great first step. And so I, I hope we can do that again real soon. This is Vicki. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, put my answer in the uh, chat in reference to uh, attracting millennials and younger people. But what I said was that Garland has to be thought of as a destination. Uh, you know, when you're traveling, um, you know, on a trip, it's all right to make a pit stop here and there. But the goal is to get to the destination because, you know, that's where the real fun begins. So Garland has to be thought of as a destination and not a pit stop for people to work for them to play, for them to have fun, for them to catch a show, for, temp, for them to enjoy the arts uh, and to shop. And in order to do that, we have to find ways and incentives to attract those businesses that will provide that need for those younger individuals. Also, we must make sure that our city is a safe city where people will wanna come and stay and live and spend their dollars. Thank you, Vicki. Anyone else care to comment on that? Yes, I would like to. All right. uh, can I? Oh, yeah. Can I? Oh. I'm sorry. Yes. Can, can you hear me? You're breaking. Can you hear me? Who's talking? Hello. Okay, if I can, if I can answer that for you, I'm looking at uh, a few minutes ago. Mosaic. Breaking up? Can you hear me? Um, you're breaking up. A lot of people don't know about Mosaic Festival and the cultural diversity that our city has. I'm sorry, Ed, uh, we can't hear you. Anita? Yeah. Um, may, I, may I answer? Please. Okay, so, you know, communication is really, um, what it revolves around. We need to uh, reach out to our different communities to understand what their needs are. We need to reach out to them to inform the citizens of opportunity, amenities, and services available to them. And just, and I, I did put some of this in the chat too, but just as an example, um, you know, I have worked with, uh, I, I've worked with Jennifer Wynn on volunteer efforts for probably seven years now. So, um, you know, I've worked with the Vietnamese community on different things. And one thing we did recently, which I'm very proud of, and, uh, you know, Scott was there, Robert was there, um, uh, let's see, Dylan was there, quite a few of the uh, representatives from council were there at a registration drive for the vaccines, um, which was a re reached out to the Vietnamese community. And, you know, one really nice thing about that was it really solidified uh, trust in the community because they were allowed to last week when we got 5,000 vaccines, they were allowed to go and get their vaccine. So it was nice to see, uh, you know, those results come to fruition. Um, and we need to understand perspectives. So for example, you know, with Asian cultures, there is a saying that says, you know, the head that pops up gets chopped off, you know? And if we don't look at other perspectives, we might think of an American phrase such as the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Um, so we need to understand and respect different cultures and reach out to them in ways that build trust with them, um, whatever that community is. And that, that starts with communication. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you to all. I know we're out of time. There's a lot of great questions in the chat box. If you want to read through those, most of the candidates have actually uh, answered those questions. So if you'll please review that since we're out of time. Excuse me, Anita, can I answer about the uh, question for youngsters? Uh, the, for the downtown, um, we should make downtown very attractive for the youngsters because the infrastructure of the downtown should be uh, completely changed to attract people. You see Galeria, when people go to Galeria, a lot of people go there, buy things and enjoy and come. Theater is there, everything is there. So we should make Garland downtown in such a model make our youngsters attractive, our business people attractive. That's my, my dream. Thank you. 
All right, so thank you all. Thank you to the candidates. Thank you for your time, your energy. Um, before we wrap up, just a couple of items. Remember that the first day of early voting is next week, Monday, April 19th, and will be held at the Dallas College, Richland College, Garland Campus. It's a mouthful. Uh, or the South Garland Library. Uh, election day is Saturday, May 1st. I'm sure you all have that on your calendar. Uh, if you have any other information on the candidates that you'd like to seek, please visit the Chamber website. Also, the Garland Chamber's annual business expo is on Friday, May 7th in the heart of Garland in our downtown. It's free to attend. Come explore exhibits from local small businesses and enjoy food from local restaurants. And also please visit our website for more information. Again, just wanna say thank you all. We wanna say a special thank you to our sponsor, Emily. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Dakar Riggs and Ingrams, CPAs and advisors. Um, thank you for the leadership that was here today. And again, uh, best of luck to all the candidates. Thank you for your time, your, again, your energy. And um, just hope you all have a great day. And thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you, you, Anita and Chad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.